Good morning, Hillside family, or good afternoon, or good evening. Um, welcome to church today, um, and I uh, pray that you're doing well, uh, and it's really cool to be able to be here with you t- today, and be able to bring you something from Jesus' Word, from the Bible, uh, from God's Word, um, and yeah, uh, my name's Tobin, if you don't know me, uh, I'm the Young Adults Coordinator here at Hillside. Uh, Liz, my wife and I and, and my three kids, we've been here at Hillside for near on 10 years now, which is amazing. And I'm just, um, yeah, it's a privilege to be speaking with you today, um, starting the conversation at least uh, with the Word of God. So today, more than anything, I just want you to know that Jesus loves you and that He wants to encourage you with His Word, but also that He wants to challenge us he wants to work in our hearts. He wants us to, to look more like him, uh, less like ourselves. And uh, I hope that's a challenge to you this morning. But I'm um, really excited to be here and yeah, bring God's word to you. So, hey, if you've got a Bible, I'm going to be reading from it today. So if you've got one, pause the video, go grab it. Or if you've got your phone and you want to read on there or wherever, or, you know, Pastor Craig does an amazing job of editing Uh, all the videos that have gone up on the YouTube page. So he's going to have something up on the screen from where we're reading today. Um, Galatians, if you want to pre-open and get ready. Um, But hey, um, it's it's amazing to to speak, but I don't want to speak my own words. I want to speak through the Holy Spirit. I want him to speak straight to your heart. I want him to, yeah, be, be there changing how we do things changing how we go about everyday life because we want to make Jesus more and more of our focus as we discover him more and more. So hey, why don't we pray? Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for everyone watching, uh, whether they stumbled across this video or if they purposely clicked on the link. God, I just pray that today that um, you will Um, speak to their hearts directly, that you will be able to encourage them through your scripture, Lord. But I just pray more than anything, Lord, that you, um, that we realize that we need you, that we realize that we need to rely on you so much more than we do. And Lord, I just pray that the, uh, the word will convict us, but also, uh, build us up and bring us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you're new uh, to this space or if you haven't been watching, we've been doing church online for a long little while now and uh, we're still not able to meet in a large number. Um, But I encourage you, if you're not watching this on a Sunday or, you know, whatever day it is that you're watching this, next Sunday, make sure you're there. We're going to have worship. Um and prayer from 9.30 to 10.30. So make sure you're there. We're allowed up to 100 people in our church building. Uh, So we'd love to see you there. Uh, Liz and myself and the kids have been down a couple of times now, and it's a beautiful space, and, you know, the music's cranking, and, yeah, it's just really nice to see people as well. So if I haven't seen you, love to see your face there on Sunday. Um, But, hey, why don't we get into the Word? Uh, We're going to read from Galatians 5 today. Um, There's a lot in Galatians 5, but I want to focus um, on verse 22. So we're going to read that out first. Uh, So if you've got your Bibles, let's go there. Let's turn there. So Galatians 5, 22 says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Now, I don't know about you, but I know that I do not rely on the Holy Spirit 24-7. Shock horror. I know that, you know, some people... Go, oh, well, you know, you're not a Christian then. But I want to challenge you that we can rely on the Holy Spirit 
every day. We can rely on him through every season. We can rely on him through good and bad. Um, because when we do, our lives are renewed. Our lives are changed. Our lives are transformed. And I want to see um, that in all of your lives. I want to see God changing your heart continuously every day. So I know for me, uh, I struggle sometimes first thing in the morning to wake up for one, but to then meet with God straight away. It's a habit that I'm working on and I want to be better at it. Um, But more than anything, I just want to be transformed by the Holy Spirit. How do we be transformed by the Holy Spirit, you might ask? Well, it's a big question, but first of all, I want to encourage you that if you do not know the finished work of Jesus, if you do not know what he's done for you to discover it yourself, you can go to any of the Gospels and get in there. But I'm going to give you a little quick snippet right now. But I encourage you to get into your word and know it from there, not from my mouth. Uh, But it talks about Jesus as the saviour of the world, um, pure and holy, fully man, but fully God. Uh, And he came to this world to show us how to live. He came to this world as an example of what he wants us to look like, what he wants our lives to be. Uh, And ultimately, he died uh, for all our sin, all the things that um, go against God, all the things that are written in the law, all the things that we can't measure up to, all the thing, all the expectations we even put on ourselves because we know who God is. He's come to pay the price so that we don't have to pay. He's already paid it. He, uh, he died on the cross for all of our sins past, present, future. And all we need to do is we need to repent and then we need to change. But how do we change? We can't do it on our own. So we need the Holy Spirit to renew us daily. And that, I think that's the challenge. I think for us in um, the Western culture, uh, even cult- cultural Christianity, that might be a hard um, word, but I I know that um, I've spent some time overseas in uh, some different countries that would not be a Western country, that would be uh, bordering on a third world uh, country. And I know that their passion for the gospel is incredible. The Christians there, uh, they lack nothing because they know the word of God. They know who he is because they're in his scripture. He's in the word. They're in the word uh, daily and they're always in prayer. They're always seeking and asking God um, to reveal himself more and more. And I know for a fact that a lot of us aren't great at doing that. We uh, we're just get so used to um, just living uh, the lives that we uh, that we have, which are great, and uh, I see nothing wrong with uh, the way that uh, our world functions. It's you know obviously there's sin, and it's falling apart. Obviously all that, but we can go have a we can you know go to uni or school or work the jobs and use those uh, gifts that God's given us. <clears throat> but if we are neglecting the Holy Spirit. If we aren't letting him work in our lives and change us, then what are we living for? My heart is for you that you that you will discover more and more of who he is. So those traits that we see um, in Galatians five twenty two. Sometimes we can you know we can see ourselves as good people. Yeah, I can be loving. I can be kind. Oh, sometimes I might even be patient. You know, that's good. I mean, you know, I'm looking more and more like Jesus. Uh, but, you know, all of that is not worth anything if we're not devoting ourselves and giving ourselves over to Jesus and letting the Holy Spirit in and letting actually the Holy Spirit convict, letting the Holy Spirit change uh, who we are 
to be more and more like Jesus. So looking at those points, I don't know how many there is there, but there's a lot. On a daily basis, where are we at with that? Are we, oh yeah, two, I can do two of those quite, quite easily. I'm pretty consistent and, you know, I know that uh, I've got my routine and I'm, I'm good with the kids and or the grandkids or I'm, you know, patient with my, my wife or my husband or, uh, you know, I can, I can do these things that God's asked me to do. But we, we got to go beyond that. Got to go beyond our own uh, value system, our own self, um, and be able to rely on the Spirit. Now, that's a massive, massive challenge because it calls us to humility. It calls us um, to humble ourselves, uh, you know, that, we, that we're weak, that we can't do these things um, on our own. We just, we can't do it. We're born into sin. We have a sinful nature. Uh, if, even if we're Christians, we, we, we can slip back into that space of rely, not relying on the Holy Spirit to change us. So there's a few other um, little sections that I would like to read out to you um, from Galatians 5. So here we go. There's a a little section I would love to read, which is verse 13 and 14. It says, For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the law, for the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, when we read that, it talks about the law and, you know, like, let's not live for ourselves. Let's live to serve. Let's live to love. Let's live to do that uh, to, for other people, not for ourselves. And I'm going to keep repeating myself here because this is what the truth tells us to do. It's like, get back to relying on the Holy Spirit. Now, I'd love for you to have a conversation around this. So if you've got pen and paper, write this one down. What are you doing in your life to welcome in the Spirit, to welcome in the Holy Spirit? Now, there's some different uh, tangents or different ways we could go, go, well, you know, I'm allowing time to worship God. I'm allowing time um, in my day to pray. Um, which is great. Uh, and, you know, we, we need to do that and we need to spend time with him. But my challenge is, is for you is we can do that and we can read, we can pray, we can worship. Um, but we, how, how can we do it in a way that we're actually going to change, that we're actually not going to end up in the same scenario the same repeated sin. We're not going to end up, um, you know, in, in horrible places that we can find ourselves. We need to constantly be renewing our mind. We need to be constantly devouring the scripture. We need to be in it more than we ever have been. If we want to have a hope for ourselves, if we want to know our purpose, our purpose is to love others, is to bring this to other people. Our purpose is to um, expose the darkness and to bring in the light. We need to come back daily to the Holy Spirit. We need to come back daily to time with Him. We need to come back daily to worshipping Him for who He is. We need to remember the sacrifice that He's made. We need to be convicted of that daily. And then it also it talks in there about living lives of freedom. What does freedom look like? It's to be rid of sin. It's to be able to move on from that uh, repeated sin. It reminds me of the scripture uh, where Jesus is talking um, to the crowd of people that are uh, wanting to stone uh, a lady that has been caught in adultery. 
and he gets down and he gets in the dirt and he starts drawing or writing, no one knows, but he says to the people, the one without sin can cast the first stone. And one by one, from oldest to youngest, they all walked away because they realized that, hey, oh, I, I've done stupid stuff, I've sinned, uh, I'm just the same as this lady that's been caught in adultery. My sin may be different, but it's still there. But then when Jesus comes into the picture, it changes. Yes, there's sin, but Jesus said, if you believe me, these people uh, haven't condemned you. They, they couldn't because they have sinned themselves. And the challenge that Jesus laid down for this lady and that he challenges us too is to go and sin no more. Jesus is welcoming us, welcoming us into relationship with him. He's welcoming us welcoming us into a place that says hey I am bigger than your sin and he was saying I'm going to pay for this sin once and for all the sacrifice has been made and he said I am the sacrifice I've done it I want to reconnect I want to have relationship I want to have conversation daily with you but sin can't be there. Sin gets in the way. Sin hinders us from knowing the Father intimately. And he calls us to a space where we go, I want to know you, Jesus. I want to know you more. But I need to be rid of this so that I can focus on who you are. He calls us um, to rely on the Holy Spirit. He calls us righteous. He calls us pure. And the challenge is to live in that space is to be continually rely on the Holy Spirit. So today, I'm not going to actually get into how do we do that. I want you to experience that in your lounge room, or if you're by yourself, please go. When you when you're thinking about this, go and spend some time with someone else that's um, read uh, or listened. Sorry to this message, um, or not, or just bring up Galatians 5, 22 with them and say, okay, well, how do we live in the spirit? Let's encourage each other. Let's spur each other on. Let's sharpen each other so that we can live in a way that is honoring to God. And I just want to close on this one little bit. Um, I've uh, got a friend of a friend um, and she is... Uh, a young lady about the same age as Liz and I, uh, and we've known her for a little while. And I seen her the other day at a friend's birthday party. Don't worry, it wasn't a big birthday party. There was only about 10 or 15 people there and everyone was social distancing. Uh, and every time I have a conversation with her, it, you just walk away going, and me and Liz have had these conversations of, Man, she is so nice, so loving, so gentle and kind, and just so encouraging. And it always, for me, leads me to a place of like, oh, I, why don't I like the way that she is? What is it that she has? And I know for a fact that the characteristics that she has is because of Jesus. It's because of the Holy Spirit that is evident in her life. And I know for a fact, and I've seen her have conversations with people that are hard work or people that are struggling or people that are bringing things uh, to her because they know that she will listen. They know that she will cry with them. They know that she is someone that they can go to um, to be loved, um, to be gentle. Um, and I know that that's straight from the spirit. And I know that that's what Jesus is calling us to be like. Let me read them out one more time for you. It's too good. The kind, this kind of fruit 
in our lives is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So please, I encourage you today. I'm going to pray in a minute, but go away and spend some time with each other and encourage each other. We don't want to condemn each other. We want to spur each other on and remind each other of what Christ has done for us, the finished work on the cross, that he's left to go back with the Father. He's ascended to heaven, but he's left us the Holy Spirit so that we might become more and more like him. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that we can know you, Jesus. We thank you that we can become more like you through the power and the revelation and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So Jesus, convict us if we're living lives that aren't focused on you. Convict us if we have sin, especially ongoing, repeated sin. Convict us of those things. And may we bring it to the light, share it with someone that we trust so that we can deal with it, we can give it to you, that we can repent. And Jesus, we just ask that you renew us daily through the power of your Holy Spirit and that we will be more and more like you. This world, Lord, the people need to know who you are. Where they need to know that they are loved by you. They need to know, that, Lord, that you have a plan for them. That Jesus, that you love us so much. And you want to see our lives renewed. You want to see our lives changed. And you want to see the good things of the Holy Spirit in work, at work here in our community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks all for joining in the conversation. I pray that uh, it's been encouraging for you this morning or this evening or any time during the day or night. Um, much love to you all and I hope to see you soon. Don't forget Sunday 9.30 for praise and worship. Love to see you there. Much love, guys. See ya.